here with young Peter from uh, uh, Hypex, uh, amplification and uh, uh, class D amplifiers, and he's going to tell us a little bit about Hypex in general. And we'll start with the history. What's the history of Hi Hypex? Um, I started my company in '96, uh, literally uh, as, a, as a startup company who started in a, in a garage. With uh, coming up with some um, uh, subwoofer amplifiers uh, for the uh, do-it-yourself market in, 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 in Europe, and in about uh, 2002, by a Dutch customer who bring me in contact with uh, with a Belgian company, Belgian uh, designer Bruno Petzijs, uh, uh, we, we should uh, build for them a class D amplifier. So I got in, in, in contact with their class D designs. Um, and uh, on that moment, uh, Bruno told me that uh, in, a f in, in, in a few months they will come up with Philips will come up with a new Class D design designed by him uh, that was called uh, uh, Universal Class D. And he said, if you want to want if you want to do something with this technology, you should wait until it is available. And uh, let's make an appointment, and I will show it to you. Now I wait some some months, and I uh, I drove to uh, to Belgium, and Bruno uh, uh, showed me the. His new uh, uh, new design, and I already saw so many other uh, Class D designs like um, the tripods uh, and the ice powers, and I, I was not very impressed by the by the by the performance how the uh, how they behave uh, on an, on a simple oscilloscope. So Bruno uh, showed me the his Class D design, and it took me about 30 seconds to decide this is a great amplifier, and I want to buy it. So that's that's the story that we started in 2003. Okay, but prior to actually hearing uh, the, the, the Bruno's design, what led you towards Class D rather than any other technology? Uh, why, why Class D prior to, to hearing Bruno's? Uh, the market has moved into Class D, and Class D has a lot of advantages that it's uh, uh, it has a uh, uh, very high FNG. A normal class AB amplifier has about 20, in practice about 20 to 30 percent, and a class D amplifier has about 90 percent or even more. It's smaller in size. Uh, for higher power amplifiers, it's more cost effective as a linear class AB amplifier. But all the other uh, class D topologies, what was available early in the market, early in the 2000s, uh, they were not performing. Uh, very good, so it's, it's, it was a bad amplifier, but it has so much other advantages that, that customers wanted to have that. And Bruno was the first designer who came up with a good sounding class D amplifier. Right. So that's the reason that we moved to that direction. Yeah, sure. Uh, how, do you, how do you deal with the obstacle that traditional audio enthusiasts have with class D amplification? You know, that there's a hardcore uh, audiophile or enthusiast who believes that the only way to do it is either valves or class A solid state. How do you how do you deal with that sort of obstacle? Um, no, we don't really deal with that. We built a very good sounding amplifier, and it goes by itself. Sure. So the customers who are very reluctant to class D, uh, they try it. They compare it to, to their product. They say, hey. This sounds very nice. So there it started. Sure. So it's it's it, it's it's the quality product, and um, what makes our class D designs totally different to all the other class D designs that it has a flat frequency response and it has a flat loop gain. And by that, it has a flat TSD response, and a tube amplifier has also a flat TSD response because it has no feedback. Um, so our amplifiers has more. Uh, more or less the same sonic signature as as uh, a tube amplifier. Sure. So that's the way that it makes it uh, very popular. Sure. Does Hypex have plans of releasing amplifiers under their own brand name, or are you purely licensing the technology to other companies? Uh, no, not not really. Uh, we are we are not actually licensing. Yeah, we have some 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 sound products where we do some licensing, but in general we come up with. Uh, Class D models, yeah. Uh, and yeah, we sell it like that. Sure. Yeah. Is, is there any difference between the Hypex products that you offer, uh, say, subwoofer manufacturers, as opposed to full range amplifier manufacturers? You know, the active subwoofers? Um, now, the technology is, is more or less the same. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, the, 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 the separate class D model is it's only a model, and the subwoofer amplifiers is is yes, completely uh, completely with, with built-in filters built on the plate. But yeah, the subwoofer amplifiers is not really uh, our our uh, bigger market anymore. It, it's it's the, the way that we started, and, yeah. and we are now into yeah really the class D models, and we sell it to to do-it-yourself hobbyists, uh, smaller companies, and very big companies. See. Class D going, where do you see your Hypex products evolving to? Uh, now, last year we have filed a new Class D technology uh, for a patent, uh, and this year uh, it is really a true high end uh, Class D solution. Uh, what will be our goal is to have uh, the best sounding Class D amplifier, what really will beat a good sounding Class AB amplifier. Um, and, and we have the product ready. Uh, and we are talking with some 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 premium uh, brands, and they are interested to use it to some new products that they will launch at the end of 2011. And is this new technology uh, going to be called a, di called a different thing, or will it be a Hypex, a, a development of the Hypex? Uh, yes, it, it, it's it's our own. Um, uh, of course, it's our own development. We have branded it in a different name. Right. Um, it will be called Encore. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not starting with an E, but with an N. With an N, yeah. yeah. And lastly, I was going to ask you, why is it that Class D in particular is so system dependent? You can hear a, a, a given Class D design, say Hypex. Okay, not, let's not say Hypex, say um, Ice Power. And in, in, in one context of a system, it could sound fantastic better or oh, as good if not better than valve or solid state in the context of a different system with different components it's a nightmare and that's what that's that's part of the the, the stumbling block that I see is that if you hear it within a, a very good context then you say yeah class D is good if you see it in a bad context that's the first thing you point at class D is bad yeah. is bad yeah okay now that, that's that's indeed a very interesting question um, the main reason is that there is uh, an output filter in the Class D design. Uh, the Class D amplifier is switching at very high frequency. It generates uh, a carrier and you have to get away of the carrier, so you need a low pass filtering. Um, all the, all the, the, the most Class D designs, they don't use any post filtering. So they do only pre-filtering. Uh, and some other do some mixing between pre-filtering and post-filtering. So you, you, you cannot get rid of the, the output filtering, the, the characteristics uh, of the output filter. So the amplifier has not a direct contact with a loudspeaker. Uh, in our class, the amplifier has only one filter, one feedback loop, post-filtering. So we measure exactly uh, the feedback right at the output of the loudspeaker, uh, output of the amplifier. So we don't have uh, a lot of problems uh, with different loudspeakers, uh, high impedance or low impedance. So with our uh, topology you don't get that kind of problems that in this situation sounds very good and in another situation sounds pretty bad. Yeah. That's indeed that's one thing. And the other thing is, is that you have to have a very low EMI. That's the, the, yeah. the high frequency noise what, what you always uh, have. Um, if you don't do the design in a very good way, you have a lot of EMI. And I know that some brands uh, has had a big problems with EMI. Yeah. The EMI generates from the loudspeaker cables can come through the mains cables back to the amplifier or back to your CD player. Right. Uh, and if you have the cables, uh, the, the, the mains cables very close to the loudspeaker cables and you generate a lot of EMI, yeah. you can hear a difference in that. Sure. Sure. Our designs uh, are having a very low EMI. Yeah. We will uh, we will have you have a, a, a standard limits. We want to have at least a limit of uh, a margin of, of 10 dB. Sometimes we have 20 dB below the limits. Right. Um, and, and that's also a, a way to getting a good concept sonic performance of the of the product. Sure.